All right, so we're gonna start the new topic on the central dogma, and I'll show you shortly um, in a diagram that actually explains what the whole process is, what it's made up, and what um, the starting point is and the ending point are. Um, so for the do now, I'm just gonna kind of go through the questions. Originally, I would have asked them and then had you answer them, but you'll go through your questions as the video proceeds. Um, you can always pause the video and then answer the questions, or you can watch the video the whole way through and try to answer all the questions and then go back to the video and um, kind of skim through sections or pause and play to get to the answers that you need. So first off, the learning objective is that students will be able to define key terms um, surrounding the essential dogma and differentiate transcription, translation, and DNA replication. So those are three of the processes that we'll kind of be talking about when we get into the actual central dogma processes. Um, but the first question as a basic knowledge is what does DNA do? And we should all know that DNA is kind of like the blueprint, right? It's the instructional manual that tells you how you're built, what you look like, what you behave like, why you are the way you are. And so DNA is instructions, right? Um, and DNA is important. Why is DNA important? Um, it's because without DNA, you don't have the instructions to have your body structure built out of, right? So you wouldn't exist if your DNA wasn't there to tell you how to be built, right? If you're building like a Lego toy, there's instructions on what goes where. If you're building any sort of structure, if you're building a building, right? There's a blueprint that tells you where things go. DNA is that information that you start out with. And that's why it's so important because without the information, you don't even know where to start. And without the DNA, you wouldn't be able to build your physical body. Where is DNA located? This should be an easy question. Everybody knows that DNA in eukaryotic organisms like us and like trees and like tigers and lions and butterflies, they're always located in the nucleus of the cell. So it's that extra membrane holding the DNA in the center of a cell. And um, it kind of makes it easy for the DNA to be located and for it to be safe. So basically the whole purpose of the central dogma is to talk about protein synthesis. And we know what proteins are, right? Because we talked about biomolecules. Proteins are structural molecules. They can be enzymes. They can sometimes be hormones, right? And you need to do the central dogma process in order to get proteins, right? Synthesis means to make. So protein synthesis means making proteins. And again, that's the whole purpose of the central dogma. You're gonna start with DNA and you have to somehow make your end product of protein. So here is a breakdown of what the central dogma is like. And so you're gonna start out with DNA in the nucleus, and then you're gonna do a process called transcription to make mRNA. And mRNA is a super special molecule because it can travel really, really far because the M in mRNA stands for messenger, okay? It takes this message copied from the DNA and it's gonna take it out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where translation is gonna happen, where you're gonna translate the language of nucleotides you know, like DNA and RNA, you're going to translate that language into protein language, which is amino acids, and that will be your end product. And that's going to be the physical embodiment of the instructions that we started out with in the DNA. So let's compare DNA versus RNA first off. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So the D comes from the deoxy, the N comes from the nucleic, and the A comes from the acid. Okay, RNA is actually quite similar and RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. So it's actually quite similar because if you just take off the deoxy, then you would have the exact same word between DNA and RNA. So again, RNA, the R comes from ribo, the N comes from nucleic and A comes from acid. So molecularly, they're kind of different, right? So if you look at DNA, the number of strands is two. So there are two strands coiling around each other in a swirling pattern, and then RNA is single-stranded. So it's only got one strand that's coiling, and it's not coiling around anything else, okay? The bases, or the nitrogenous bases for DNA are ATGC, so adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, okay? Generally, you'll just be looking at the letters. So you have ATGC, and the thing is RNA is slightly different. RNA actually doesn't have a T. Instead of the T, it has U. So it has adenine A, it has uracil U, guanine G, and then cytosine C. So three of the bases are shared between DNA and RNA, but the T is only in DNA. So if you see a T for thymine, you know automatically that the molecule is DNA. And if you see a U, that means it's RNA for uracil. Um, we just talked about this in the do now section where DNA is found only in the nucleus. 
right? If it's anywhere else, it gets damaged, it gets lost, it can't be found to do its function and give out the instruction. So it's always located in the nucleus. Now, RNA is found in the nucleus when it's being made off the DNA. It's also found in the cytoplasm or the whole rest of the cell. Once it's taking its message out, there are other kinds of RNAs that help in protein synthesis by bringing in amino acids like tRNA. And there's also rRNA that are part of the ribosome that are actually building the protein at the very end. So there's multiple kinds of RNA and you'll find them all over the cell, including inside the nucleus and outside. So quick checks, where is DNA located? We know it's the nucleus. Where are proteins made? Proteins are not made in the nucleus because that would be too busy in the central hub of the cell, right? So that would be in the cytoplasm on the ribosomes. Why can't DNA directly go to the ribosomes and give instructions? Well, if DNA leaves the nucleus, then it's dangerous that it could get easily damaged, it could get broken, it could get lost, right? So we don't want actually to have DNA leave the nucleus, and so therefore we send a message. Okay, so what has to happen in order for the information in DNA to be taken to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm? Well, you're going to create the mRNA from the DNA, and then that messenger RNA, mRNA, is going to leave the nucleus and then go to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Okay, so this important step of doing transcription from making the mRNA using DNA is super, super important because you need to get to the location where the proteins are going to be made. After that, obviously, the proteins will be made in the cytoplasm using the process of translation. So again, who has instructions for making proteins? That would be DNA, right? That's all of the instructions. If DNA can't leave the nucleus, how do those instructions get to the ribosomes? Who actually make the proteins? Well, DNA has to tell the messenger. So the messenger can go ahead and leave the nucleus and then go to the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are located to make the proteins. So like I said, the first step is the process of transcription, and that's when you are turning DNA into mRNA. And the M stands for messenger RNA. I keep saying this over and over again, but it's super important that you know that mRNA is the one that's doing the traveling, right? It's like the message. It's like DNA sending a text message out into the cytoplasm to say, hey, this is the protein that you're going to make, and this is how you're going to make it. And that message has to leave from the actual starting point where the DNA is sending it, and it has to go to the recipient where the protein is going to be made. Step two in the central dogma is called translation. And I think the good way to remember how or why it's called translation is because when you're going from DNA to mRNA, you're using ATGC going to AUGC. Those are still both in the same language of um, nucleotides or um, in the language of nucleic acids, right? Because DNA and RNA are in the same category of biomolecule. Now, you're actually gonna be changing language when you go from your mRNA to your proteins. So that process is called translation, right? So when you translate one language to the other, Spanish to English, English to Chinese, right? That's translating. So you're gonna be translating mRNA and you're gonna be translating your AUGC into proteins, which the basic language or monomers are amino acids. So that's the step two part. And the final end product is the protein that you were aiming to make the whole time, which either helps you build structure, it works as an enzyme, maybe it works as a hormone, and it does a lot of important physical attributes for an organism versus DNA, which is only instructions, right? So without DNA, you don't have proteins, right? So you don't have a physical body. But if you, don't have DNA, you can't make the physical body, right? But you can't only have DNA either because that's just the instructions. So both are super important in the relation to each other, right? You need DNA to make proteins, but you need protein technically to make DNA too because ribosomes are made out of protein. So it's kind of this like cyclical thing where you have to have one to have the other. So it's super important to maintain life and have a balance of the process of central dogma always be going.